so this little tutorial is going to be on suitable lash curls to use depending on what your client's lashes are doing so although we've talked a lot about eye shapes um, and suitable curls for, for certain eye shapes this also is going to be dictated that by the type of natural lash that your client has so just because you think they might suit let's say um, a dolly lift if they've got like a pointing downward lash you'll need to think about what curl that you're going to use on them so you're going to get the best bond so this is my picture of an eye okay and well we'll be lash adding lashes to it later on and the curls that we all are familiar with in this industry are j curl which is obviously a flat curl like this a b curl which is still has our flatter space and a little bit of a flick up at the end C curl, which is our universal curl on what we're going to be using on most of our clients. Our D curl, which is a little bit more extreme, as you can see, flicking up. And our L curl, which is almost like a right angle. So we have that flat contact point and the bit pointing upwards. So if you do get a client that comes in, let's say, would like my lashes, whose lashes, and this is where the lashes come out of, point out straight like this, okay? This is where you are going to be using your J or your B curls because, and the red here is going to mimic the extension, because they have a flat contact point, okay? So you actually need to get a good bonding area off that straight natural lash. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of J curls, okay? There is one client that I use them on just because her lashes are strange and the way they sit. But your most, um, your your preferred curl for this type of lash, if they still want a very natural looking sort of effect, maybe like an old lady, is going to be your B curl because you get this nice area of contact here with the straight bit and you get a nice natural flick up at the end. So it's enough to give them the illusion of a little bit of sort of open eye effect, but you still get a fantastic contact point. So I'm using this normally on clients that want more of a natural look or have got a very very straight natural lash and if you keep it simple like that for that type of client you really can't go wrong okay if for example you have a client that has a natural lash like this blue bit so this is a blue natural lash and you try to use a c curl on it you might find that you have a minimal contact point because your c curl tends to do this okay so as you can see, you've only got a minimal contact point, which is not too bad because, again, with our glues, they're so good nowadays that we do only need a little bit of glue. But you run the risk of this natural lash pointing out from underneath the C-curl and it can look very strange when the client turns sideways. So although on most clients you can get away with a C-curl, if they have got a very straight lash, you just have to bear this in mind that with a C-curl, you're going to see this natural lash popping out from underneath it. Okay, so I'm now going to rub this off and I'm going to draw what most of your clients are going to have, okay, which is a slight little lift like so to their natural lash. So this is probably going to be 90% of your clients that come in. So this is where your C curl is going to come in, okay, because, you know, a C curl actually kind of mimics what they naturally have already, as you can see. So you get a fantastic bonding point. You get a nice curl up at the end to give a very nice natural effect with a little bit more lift than they've got. So it is the best of both worlds and it suits nearly every single client out there on the market. So C curl is your universal curl. It's a curl that I worked with happily for two years before ever experimenting with another curl because back then we didn't have the forums like we have got now or people to educate you what to use. So a C curl is a great curl for everybody out there that has a nice natural curl to their lashes. So you can't go wrong with it. Okay, I'm going to leave the natural lash as it is at the moment, okay, so with like we did a minute ago, so a nice natural curl. Now, if you use a D curl, uh, D curl for classics is not my favourite, and this is the reason why, because this is what a D curl does again. It is an extreme curl upward, so you get a minimal contact point, and you tend to get a natural lash pointing out underneath it. And a D curl has a tendency to look a little bit squiffy if you haven't put it on completely uniformed. And it is an extremely hard curl to bond because your contact point is so minimal, as you can see. So a D curl, you know, you can use it. And a lot of us say to use it on the outer corner of the eye to get a flick. It will only work if your client has a suitable natural lash, OK, or is not going to have too much pointing out. So to work with a D curl like you've got here you actually need a client who has actually got a lateral lash that is quite curly and you'll get a good bonding point 
okay so decals okay on a classic set are quite difficult to work with unless your client has a natural lash like this blue one that has a slight little bit of lift going right up okay and then we're going to move on to our L curl okay which was actually designed for the um, Asian um, clientele whose natural lashes tend to do this they tend to point downwards and they also have a hood but we're just going to talk about what natural lashes do and I have a client called Emma whose lashes do this they actually point right downwards so you can see the problem that we would have if we were to use any of these other curls on here let's say a B curl or a C curl let's say this is a C curl it's going to do this so actually it still points downward despite it being a C curl um, you're still going to get a very very lazy look because realistically the lashes want to be coming out and up here but even with a C curl we're getting a lash that points down here even if you were to use a D curl okay you're still going to struggle because your contact point is going to be so minimal it's going to do that and you're going to see the natural lash pointing out underneath so a D curl is not great for this so this is where your L curls are going to come into their own with a client like this okay so with your L curl you get your fantastic straight bit that we've got here and then you get your lovely flick upwards at the end here actually let's extend that a little bit lower so you get the the idea what I'm doing and you get a lovely lift okay so not only do you get a fantastic bonding bit but you get that beautiful lift exactly what this client needs so for that type of client an L curl is your preference and you also get the most amazing retention out of L curls absolutely love L curls for volume haven't really used them for classics but you know if you're going to use them you know do so for this type of client um, really really great and like I said amazing retention so that is pretty much just an overview of the type of curls that you're going to be use, using on your clients do you know what you know I try and keep things ever so simple unless somebody wants a certain look you know C curls are just great on absolutely everybody so most of your clients that are going to come in that want a certain type of look C curl works really well if you're a volume lash trained technician then what you will find is that D curls actually bond and work really nicely in volume lashes in like 0 0.07, 0 0.06 and 0 0.05. Not so much so in classic lashes. So for volume I will use them, for classic I won't. But I hope that's given you a, an overview. Get, ladies, keep things really simple. Don't overcomplicate the curls that you're using. Most of you are going to be using C's on most of your clients, B's on your older clients and D's on the outer corner on most of your dramatic clients. Keep it simple and you can't go wrong.